What are the dishes in a Luke Martin Taiwan Huanda? Is there something that throughout all these videos that you want to share with the audience that you just haven't had the opportunity to share yet? When I first moved to Taiwan and started my YouTube channel, I was with my now ex-girlfriend, Sabrina. We filmed a lot of videos together and then uh, we broke up and I didn't want to make it a big public thing. We never really got in depth about what happened. Today we're here with the man, myth, legend, <laughs> Luke Martin. You hear the name Luke Martin as if it's just one of these like folk tales from decades ago. Once upon a time, there was this man called Luke Martin. Hearing it from yourself, who are you and uh, what are your relationship with mm. Taiwan? It's much less exciting than you just talked it up, oh, to be I'm, honest. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'll take that as a compliment though. I'll go back to the beginning. I moved to Jai from Canada. So I, I became an English teacher for the first year when I moved here. And I just started making videos about the, the food, mostly just to share it with my friends and my family back home, pretty much. But then it started to kind of get popular, especially with the local Taiwanese, like the like Jai uh, Facebook page or something like that. And then a lot of the local Jai people started to be interested in it. I was like, oh, I got to do another one like that. And I kept doing it and doing it. And yeah, it pretty much leads up till now. <laughs> How did you first hear about Taiwan? And, and how did you actually end up here the first time? Yeah, so after I, I did my university degree in marine biology, so totally unrelated to anything I do, except I like to make the joke that it helps me identify the seafood that I'm eating now. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so I did my degree and then I knew I wanted to go to Asia. I knew I wanted to teach English and I knew I wanted to make videos when I did it too. So I went on, you know, one of those websites where there's all these job listings for English teachers and there was opportunities in Korea and in Japan and China. But the Taiwan one really caught my eye basically because it seemed like the easiest one out of all of them. And I knew <laughs> I wanted to have a lot of extra time to make YouTube videos. And also there was a lot of people making YouTube videos in Japan and Korea and stuff. And I was like, oh, I'll, I'll go exploring Taiwan and try to kind of carve out my own little path here. And that's what I did. So how long were you in Taiwan? So I only in lived time? in Taiwan for one year. I can swear that I've seen even like more than one year worth of video <laughs> yeah. on your channel. Yeah, I've probably spent like collectively maybe like closer to three years here just because I keep coming back. I've probably been here. I don't even know. I couldn't even count like 20, 30, 40, 50 times. I don't know. But uh, I was even here during COVID. Like I came in just a couple of days before the borders closed mm. and I spent probably six months at that time. That was probably the longest stretch since... I was teaching, but yeah, I was always coming back to Taiwan, always. So just to bring anyone up to speed now who might have, have missed this legend of Luke Martin, world famous travel YouTuber, 1.5 million subscribers. Uh, what else have I missed? 2.5 on Facebook. 2.5 <laughs> on Facebook, okay. I am sorry, I'm sorry. You also get to uh, not sleep with the president, but you get to sleep in her house. Yes, that's uh, true. How was that? That was quite an experience. Actually, one of the coolest things I've ever done. Really unique experience. So yeah, it was. it's like a program. They're still running it now. Spend a night at the presidential office and they've got like a five-star hotel in there. We got to meet the vice president at the time. They also took us to like a Michelin restaurant and fancy meat. And then I drank a lot of wine and then I went back. <laughs> and then I forget <laughs> everything else. <laughs> no, well, yeah, that's kind of true. And uh, I was like, oh, I'm going to do a live stream. Maybe a bad idea at the time because I was drinking too much, but I did a live stream. And then the next morning I woke up and it was like all in the news here in Taiwan. This YouTuber is uh, live streaming from the presidential office. And I didn't, I didn't even clue in that, like, this is going to make the news or anything. So oh, wow. it was a pretty amazing experience. And the next morning we got to have breakfast and uh, we get to sit right where Tsai Ing-wen sits and uh, and they deliver the Fu Hong soy milk, you know, Fu Hong, super famous, super famous. You got to wait in line for like two hours. They like delivered it and I just sat in the presidential chair and had my soy milk. <laughs> Pretty amazing experience. Life is good, but now you're here. So, <laughs> so there's, a, there's always room to improve. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Maybe I'm going down. <laughs> And speaking about a pretty amazing experience and sleeping like a president, I quickly want to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Emma.
Now, full disclaimer, I actually don't know if any president is actually using the Emma mattress, but if they do want to experience Europe's most award-winning mattress, and in my own personal opinion, the world's most comfortable mattress, then any president who is watching this right now should head over to Emma's website where you can get up to 38% off on their products. And if you do use my personal coupon code LUCAS10, you will get an additional 10% off your purchase as well. And those 10% is regardless of what you are purchasing on their website. For example, this hybrid version of the mattress that we've been using here in this apartment, maybe the new diamond pillows, or maybe you do want to try their 100% removable and washable mattress protector as well. You can of course choose from a lot of different sizes as well, not only for the mattress, but also for this bed frame. So no matter your living situation or the size of your house or apartment, there will definitely be an Emma mattress for you. Sadly, you will not get that presidential soybean and breakfast, but what you will get with any Emma purchase is the 100 night sleep guarantee, meaning that you can actually try out the bed and the mattress in your own home for 100 nights. And if you're not 100% satisfied, you can just contact Emma, they will come home to your own home, pick up the mattress, and then of course you will get 100% of the money back. But although I personally never want to return anything from Emma, I think it is time for all of us to return back to Luke Martin and continue with the rest of this video. What keeps bringing you back to Taiwan? I think it's just the people here, just so nice. Every time I come back here, like this time I'm here just for a short stay, but uh, every time I come back, it's just a special feeling. Maybe it's like nostalgia, but it's a beautiful country. It's a beautiful city. Taipei is an amazing city. It's an amazing place to just work. I've traveled to many different countries. I get to experience different places, but Taiwan's just special. It's got a special place in my heart, but I also love to make videos here. I love the food here. The food here is amazing. Amazing to watch how Taiwan Taiwan has changed uh, over the last few years as well, or like last five, six years. I have to ask them, this is like my once in a lifetime question. What is the best food in Taiwan? And what is something that has given you like the biggest impression? Maybe not like the, the most how to. For example, the, the one I think of now, which might actually give away the answer for you, was you did a, a documentary of uh, this guy who was like risking his life. <sighs> Yeah. for like building like in the, the pots basically mm. do you have any any stories like that that is like really the first thing you think about when it comes to like mm. taiwan or food in taiwan if we're just going typical taiwanese food like when i land i always tell people this is my favorite food is the pendang like the lunch boxes because no hear me what? out because you can how go many videos to... <laughs> have you done <laughs> hear me you out say lunch you boxes. have all the taiwanese dishes there that's the thing you go to those lunchbox buffet kind of places. You've got yeah. all the like classic dishes and you can pick and choose. So if I'm going to eat one thing for the rest of my life, Taiwanese food wise, it's going to be lunchbox because you can change it up all the time. Okay, <laughs> fair but enough. If we're going like unique, interesting foods, Uncle Goat, who you're talking about, Uncle Goat, he uh, cooks that underground, takes like 72 hours. He pours like 10 bottles of uh, mijo inside of that thing it's strong when you taste it but they also have like um, the roast chicken that they hang it in the clay pots roast the chicken they get all the little oil that drips down then mix it with the mian xin the, the tiny noodles that's amazing there's a lot of good food in Jai, and i was lucky to have the opportunity to help uh the netflix street food asia taiwan episode they contacted me via email and they said we want to make a episode of street food asia uh in taipei and i said i'll help you but we're not doing taipei we're doing Jai because Jai is what's wrong with place. taipei well Come taipei on, is man. awesome but on the series you have like seoul bangkok uh osaka all these Jai. Here, Jai. <laughs> So I just wanted to like, <laughs> it's kind of like my hometown. I wanted to, I wanted to shout out Jai. And they filmed also the Sagwo Yuto, the fish head soup, uh, Grace, her name's Grace and very super famous in the night market in Jai. Luckily I'm friends with Grace, so I don't have to wait in the line for like four hours. <sighs> <laughs> and now I'm friends with you, so I'm expecting like a VIP pass next okay. time I go down there. All right. How many times are you like flying throughout a year? Because if you, he <laughs> said, if I check your YouTube channel this morning, I checked you were in like in Vietnam. <laughs> yeah, I was in Vietnam like a few days ago. So, so how how is like your YouTube channel calendar versus your like your real life calendar? Are you traveling as much, or are you doing it like you know one trip to last a month and then you just stay home in Canada for half a year? Yeah, I try to do like bursts, basically film as much as I can and then I try to take a little bit of time in Canada because I don't film in Canada. There's not really much food in Canada. You have the, what's it called? 
the 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 gravy fries thing. <laughs> Putin. Putin. Uh, put, Putin. <laughs> Putin. <laughs> yes. And then you have uh, beaver tails. Beaver tails, which is delicious. We have beaver tails. Beaver tails are delicious. Yeah. yeah. My girlfriend's Thai, so we're also spending a lot of time in Bangkok, but still coming back to Taiwan as much as I can. Other than food, mm. if you were comparing like Taiwan with all these other amazing places you've been to, what else do you think that makes Taiwan stand out a little bit? It's got to be the the nature. It's got to be the beautiful east coast of Taiwan with its dramatic cliffs into the ocean. There's, I wouldn't say that they're super nice beaches, but there's there's nice beaches in Taiwan. The, the small outer lying islands like Penghu and Orchid Island are beautiful. And the waterfalls, like I was saying, if you like to go out into the nature and have like a beautiful emerald green, blue waterfall, I would say it's better than places like Thailand and the Philippines. Go to the waterfall in the Philippines and it's just packed with people you gotta pay or like bali you gotta pay an entrance fee mm, to go yes. into the waterfall oh, I, that that ruins just like yeah. so much it's not about the money <laughs> but just the fact that it's been like commercialized exactly. and it's like a parking lot and it's like you do that mm -hmm. like that yeah i 100 mm -hmm. agree i like just driving the scooter up in the mountains the mountains in taiwan in general really like it's the top i think it's the tallest mountains in southeast asia the ali san and yu san i'm not i'll sure. take your word for it fact check me you on have, that you have 2.5 <laughs> Five million followers on Facebook, you cannot be wrong. Yeah, well, I'll tell you about food facts perfectly, but not necessarily top mountains in Taiwan. What are the dishes in a Luke Martin Taiwan Huanda? Oh, now, now you're putting me to the <laughs> test. Okay, so we start in Taipei. Taipei is like everything. Taipei is like a little bit of everything, so we'll skip Taipei. We'll skip Taipei. We'll skip Taipei. We'll... Lunchbox. Taipei lunchbox. <laughs> <laughs> the West Coast, what do we hit first? Jai, you gotta have chicken rice or turkey rice. Mm. They call it chicken Just rice, but turkey straight rice. To, straight to the chicken rice. Yeah. yeah, straight to the chicken rice. It's actually turkey rice. It's actually turkey rice. In all the chicken rice. In all the chicken rice is turkey. What? Yes. I hope I'm right about that. But I, I believe, yes, it is turkey rice. My whole life has been, that was like literally the only thing I knew about food in Jai. Wow, you gotta go Jai, man. <laughs> then we get to Tainan, you've got the, the beef soup. That's, that's the best in Tainan. That like raw beef, they just kind of like blanch it in the soup. Kaohsiung? What do you got in Kaohsiung? Sorry, Kaohsiung people. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you already slammed Taipei, so it's like, <laughs> I don't care about Kaohsiung I like anymore. the little cities. Um, I guess in Kaohsiung, you've got... Uh, we don't have... To, this is your one, though. We don't have to stop in Kaohsiung. Okay, we'll keep going. We'll just go straight around to the East Coast. Taidong and Hualien aren't also very, like, necessarily known for their foods, but really good seafood around the East they Coast. They make chocolate in Taidong. That's all I know. Really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Or like, like uh, cocoa, at least. Really? Yeah. I mean, don't don't fact check me on that. But <laughs> <laughs> the only Taiwanese chocolate I've had has come from Taidong. Really? Yeah. Was it good? Yeah. I mean, chocolate. It's amazing. Yeah. 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 We also have to give a, a shout out for the tea in Taiwan. The tea is amazing, and coffee too. Mm. It's all Jai actually up okay. in the mountains. <laughs> Go to Jai people. Jai is amazing. I love Jai. What really. am I even doing here in Taipei? I <laughs> he just had moved my whole studio to. Everybody to just Jai. goes to Jai and they just eat the turkey rice and leave. But you got to get on the motorbike. You got to drive up in the mountains. Fun Chi Hu. Have you heard of that? No. It, I mean, it sounds it sounds familiar, yeah, but it's I don't know. What sort it of is. like Joe Fun, but without all the tourists. It's like a mountain okay. town built by the Japanese, and it's uh, famous. They've got really good donuts there. Like worth going to Fun Chi Hu to eat the donuts. <laughs> They're incredible. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So. After now 400 uh, food videos, can you cook yourself? That's something <laughs> I've always wondered. Like, is your standards just extremely high? Yeah. So it means that you're an amazing chef or that you just don't even bother because you cannot make it anyway? That's a great question. Um, okay, so when I'm traveling, definitely I'm not cooking. I'm just going to go. Like, it literally makes no sense to cook in Taiwan, in my opinion. You can buy the ingredients for the food for the same price that you can buy the food cooked. And But somebody <laughs> yes. who's way better at cooking it is going to cook it for you and it's going to taste way better. So it just doesn't make sense. But when I'm home in Canada, that's not the case. But luckily for me, my girlfriend is a very, very good cook. She mm. cooks Thai food. So we literally eat Thai food every single day in Canada. Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> so the answer, answer is no. Question, you no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely not. What can you tell me about Swedish food? What, besides the meatballs, what do we got? And I know that you pretty much did. Coffee. <laughs> yeah. Coffee. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's always potatoes. Yeah. And then uh, if you're feeling fancy, you have like mashed potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. The stu super stereotypical Swedish would be like moose, you know, but I mean, it, yeah, I'm sure. Moose meat? 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, people might not know this about me, but I grew up hunting. Like, my father's huge hunter. My family's hunting family big oh. time. So we hunt especially ducks, but also moose, deer, bear. Okay. Do you see bear? Yeah, it's big in this part of Canada that I live in. Like how, how, like hunting with like just rifle with a rifle and with. How would you, would you like go up and just like <clears throat> well, you, sneak up on you, a bear? You sit in a tree. Uh huh. You get a little stand in a tree stand, and you sit there all day long. You freeze your ass off, and no bear comes. And then you go home, <laughs> and then you go back the next day, and the next day, and the next day, and hopefully by the end, you know, you've got a window like two weeks or something. Hopefully. Um, a bear comes. So, did you grow up in a small town? Oh yeah, yeah. It was too. yeah. It was like um, like how many people? Sixty. Oh really? Okay. <laughs> it's, small. it's like yeah. nothing. It's also why I want to be in the middle of Taipei. Yeah. Because it's like the, literally the two extremes. You yeah, know? I love it too. So yeah, no, it's it's amazing. It's yeah, I know, I agree. Like uh, going on the MRT, <laughs> it's like so exciting. Yeah. Just everything was so new and unique. I, you know, I, I get like reversed culture shock going back because. Mm-hmm. Like I, I and I didn't realize this growing up in Sweden, but in my Swedish life, like we don't have elevators. <laughs> it's not part of our life yeah. unless you go to like a doctor's appointment or something like specific. Mm-hmm. Well, as soon as I came back now, I realized how both me and my mom actually, when we first came to Taiwan, of course we know how an elevator work, but if you're on the third floor and you see that the elevator is on the first floor, then we will press up. Because we want the elevator. Bring it because up. we want the, We know that the elevator is supposed to go up, so we will press up, yeah. and then we will go in. And the elevator thinks we're going up, but mm-hmm. we want to go down. And this ha- this happened to me going back to Sweden again. That one time I stepped into an elevator, and it's like I saw a Swedish elevator, and I was like, "How does a Swedish elevator work?" And I did the same as they. <laughs> really? <laughs> and I was like, "What is wrong with me?" Wow. So yeah, that's like how I grew up. I just wanted to to finish off here with asking: Is there something that throughout all these videos that you want to share with the audience that you just haven't had the opportunity to share yet. Like I was just saying, people don't really know that I grew up hunting a lot. That's one thing. But I guess I will touch on this point: is that uh, when I first moved to Taiwan and started my YouTube channel, I was with my now ex girlfriend Sabrina. We filmed a lot of videos together, and then uh, we broke up. And I didn't want to make it a big public thing, and so I sort of we left like a message in the community board, and we let people know, but we never really got in depth about what happened. And I won't do that e- now either. But <laughs> I just laying it up. You laying it up like <laughs> yeah. perfectly though. But I mean, some people still wonder like, where is she? Because she she was a part of the videos. But yeah, we're, we her and I uh, were still friends, and we still talk, and we we even worked together for a few years after breaking up. And uh, she's living in Canada now. I'm still traveling, so I think a lot of people just kind of wonder about that. So since you put me on the spot, I'm, I might as well address it. <laughs> okay. I, on behalf of my audience, thank you for the clarification. <laughs> yeah. Maybe people heard me say earlier that I have a Thai girlfriend now, and they're kind of shocked. So maybe it makes a little bit more sense. Stay more updated with his videos, folks. Yeah. Seriously. Well, I didn't do a great job of addressing it at the time, just because of our privacy. But you know. Yeah. You know it is. And if by some miracle some of you have not yet subscribed <laughs> to Luke Martin, please head over there, watch all his both Taiwanese videos and then videos from from all over the world. One more thing that we didn't address yet. We both have the same name. My we name both have is the same Lucas. L U K A S. I've never For met real? somebody with the same spelling because everyone spells it L U C A S. Your name is not Luke. Lucas Martin. Yeah, Lucas. L U K A S. I didn't know that. First time. I've ever met somebody with the same name. Wow. <laughs> We're blood brothers. That's amazing. <laughs> I had no idea that your name was Lucas. Yeah. Is that Swedish Whoa. like spelling? L U K A S? Yeah, we yeah. we like our K's. Yeah. yeah. We we go C usually in Canada. I'm the the one odd one out. Well, then you should definitely subscribe to uh, to Lucas for <laughs> yes, sure. Yes, please, the two Lucases. Thank you all so much for watching. Both our names are Lucas. <laughs> Starts with L as in like, ends with S as in subscribe. Please to both. We'll see you all Bye-bye. in the next one.